There are sirens outside and I'm waiting for my dog. <laughs> hey guys, welcome back. I hope you're having a wonderful day. It's Cassie here from Explore Horizons, helping you guys learn, grow, and earn more with social media. Today I'm gonna to show you top five tips on how to design a better pin for Pinterest and increase your repinning rate. You can also download my free cheat sheet. Don't forget to keep on watching till the end so you know how to use it. Number one, use Canva. Oh my God, <laughs> I love Canva. It is so easy to use and it's free. Canva has a ton of free templates, pre-made designs in all shapes and sizes. So it doesn't matter if you're not a graphic designer since it's incredibly easy to use. Number two, use stock photography. I use another free website called Pixabay. Um, now, it is a public domain site, so you have to be careful about copyright. This is because anyone who has an account upload to their library, you can't 100% trust if the images are royalty free or not. The other websites that you could use are iPhoto Stock, Big Stock, or Shutterstock. Uh, these are all on paid plans and you can do a free trial. Canva also offers a $1 photo as well, which you can purchase once you're finished with your design. Number three, use clean and clear images. Unless your pin requires a messy image, it's better to keep it nice and clean. But try not to over clutter it as, it will, as your message will get lost in the chaos. Tip number four, use text. So if you're on Pinterest and you're looking at pins and you come across a lady working out and there's no text on the image and there's no text on the image. So you keep scrolling and you see the same lady doing a workout, but you see on the, but there's text on the image and it says how to do an easy workout for the busy woman. Which one are you more likely to click on? I know I click on the one with the text because I know exactly what I'm gonna get out of that pin. So use text and I try to use catchy titles if I don't use the title that I've already used in my blog post or my video post or whatever you're using your pin for and use up to maybe about three different types of text. And what I mean by that is like three different sizes. Looks like a more compelling pin. And lastly, number five, create multiple pins for the same article. So I make about two to five pins, um, depending on how much, how many times I can change the title of um, my article without getting too irrelevant to what my actual article is about. That way I can increase the traffic rate that my pin is going to be clicked on and I can expand my range as well. So if someone likes the way that one title sounds, then they might repin that one. But if some other pin is liked by somebody else and they repin it, then that's the same article getting to different sources of traffic. I also do this because it gives you more content to put on your Pinterest account. It also helps your articles be evergreen. So later on, maybe like, two months down the track and your article is still really relevant to what's going on right now, you can make a new pin for that and then post that onto Pinterest. It will then start to gain more traffic once again. If you learned something from this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, share it with a friend, and don't forget to comment down below what topic you wanna to hear about next. Subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.